Well, hello everyone. I wanted to work a problem from the Chapter 6 homework assignment, one of the most missed problems in the set. Uh, before I do, though, I wanted to revisit an idea that totally threads any course in algebra. And to such an extent that several years ago, I dressed the idea up in pseudo-biblical language to help you guys remember it. I called it the First Commandment of Mathematics. And essentially it says, Thou shalt not divide by zero. That's a no-no. And that idea pervades any course in mathematics, and it is essential for this problem in chapter 6, uh, dealing with rational expressions and functions. This is problem 72 from section 6.3. And notice here we have a function, big F of x, being equal to this expression right here. And notice that what we have here is fractions within fractions, or complex fractions. And so the problem itself asks us to find the domain of this complex fraction, this complex function. And the hint I gave you was, you really don't have to do a lot of algebra here. You simply ask yourself, what values of x force zeros into denominators? In other words, what values of x violate the first commandment of mathematics? Thou shalt not divide by zero. The game here then becomes to locate all the denominators and make sure that x never takes on a value that makes those denominators zero. And when I first worked this problem, my mind went back to a, a very famous geometry puzzle, which no doubt you've seen. How many triangles do you see there? And uh, this is very tricky because there's triangles within triangles, and that's very similar to what's going on here. There's denominators within denominators. And so let's go about and identify the various fractions whose denominators we have to make sure never equal zero. Now I think this one is really quite easy to see. That denominator can never be zero, and the only value of x that will make that denominator zero is zero itself. And so the domain restriction here is x can't ever be zero. It can be anything else, but it can't ever be zero. All right, here's another very visible denominator. This subfraction 8 over x squared. We can never let that denominator go to zero. And again, the only value of x that will cause that to happen is when x is equal to zero. And so the restriction is the same as the one above it. x can't be zero. Now this is where most people stopped. They saw those two denominators, they noted the restrictions, and they said the solution was x can be anything, all real numbers, but it can't be zero. And the problem was seeing all the triangles within the triangles and all the denominators within the denominators. In other words, this overarching denominator, or if you will, this underarching denominator, was missed by a lot of folks. We have to be sure that that denominator never goes to zero, which essentially means we need to find out what values of x solve this equation, and then we can't let ev ever let x take on those values. Now this is a, a pretty easy equation to solve. What I first did was added 8x to both sides, obtaining this. And then I multiplied both sides by x squared. And when you do that, you cancel out the x squared on the right side, and you end up with this. And now divide both sides by 2. And when you do that, you generate this. And so here we are, essentially solution time. What values of x will cause the left-hand side to be 4? And the answers are 2 and negative 2. Both of those squared equal 4. And so we can't ever let x be 2 or negative 2. If we do, then this underarching denominator will end up going to 0. And we will have violated the first commandment of mathematics. And so that is the solution here. Let me drag that in. The domain is all real numbers. x can be anything, but x can't be 0, 2, or negative 2. And so um, I want to see if you can get past this, because these, these rest domain restrictions, like the first commandment of mathematics, thread any algebra course and are essential as you head towards calculus. OK. One last thing to do, and that's to have some fun and return to our triangle problem. And so you might want to pause the video and do some counting, because in a few seconds what I'm going to do is click this button and 
the triangles will be highlighted and you can see if you found it all the triangles. Here we go. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven triangles.